All right, yo, 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 this is Love Killer Trey, uh, kicking it with a special guest today by the name of Ricochet. Yeah, um, yeah definitely. We're just um, kicking it. We're going to spit some game and chop it up real quick, um, do a sort of interview, uh, get some thoughts across, um, and deep dive into um, this whole space wave movement. So I am, once again, Love Killer Trey, formerly of the Committee Podcast. I'm here today with uh, my special guest, Ricochet. Uh, any shout outs you'd like to give real quick before we get into things? Yeah, I'd like to give a shout out to King Noel, the one funny dude right there, and also my video director. I'd like to give a shout out to uh, SKNJ All Day, Black Bag, Bass Crow, Mello, and the whole Space Wave Entertainment. All right, definitely. And uh, just to let everybody oh, yeah, know. Everybody, that's everybody be tuning in, too. Okay, definitely. Yeah, everybody that's tuning in, um, what's up? Because we are on live. Um, definitely wanted to give a shout out to yourself for um, gracing us with your presence. Um, of course, Ricochet is definitely a talented individual, a man of many hats, um, an accredited screenwriter. Um, he has space wave movement as well as other things. So um, I want to kind of deep dive into things. So um, definitely want to talk about this um, newly entitled... Uh, EP that's just come out, the DB, well, DDOBS. So that's Delta Delta Oscar Bravo Cin no, Cinco's not it. Uh, S is in Sierra. <laughs> so the yeah. first question that I am going to ask is, of course, what is Space Wave? Where did it begin and how did it begin? Okay. Uh, Space Wave. Space Wave is a, it started off as a music group, uh, branched off of a, uh, of a parent company, which is a family based company. I basically took the scraps of what was cut from that team and reinvented the whole new team, which is the Space Wave of today. Not only, we started off just doing mixtapes, now we do songwriting, videos, uh, albums, and just try to get as much stuff out there as we can as far as promoting the whole unit. It's more than just music, and it's more than just writing. It's a whole entertainment company. Okay, definitely, definitely. And uh, we definitely like to see uh, young entertainers going out there. And so about how long, I know it's been over a decade, but I kind of wanted to ask, um, how have you managed in that decade to keep yourself as an independent? And how difficult is it doing so with so many people hopping in on 360 deals um, and just doing things like that? How did you manage to remain independent and, and give us that that game well it's by chance first of all because it's not, i mean the offers i was given the deals i just felt as though they wasn't worth what the what i was actually bringing and just from not being locked in one of the deals because i'm gonna bring up an instance i was working with the manager who actually founded three six mafia when i was living in north carolina mm -hmm. now black manager you know he's he's speaking and he want to let me know how things work. I thank him because he's the reason I got most of the paperwork I was lacking at the time. So I do thank him. But when you're talking to a black person and even in this business, you're going to be main, remain business professional. But the first time he dropped that in bomb, <laughs> he let some layers go down and I was like, okay, now we can, now we can talk. But then he's going to tell me that, you know, what I was trying to do, I was being arrogant and I have to let, you know, I had to let a lot of control of what I was doing go, and that 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 didn't fit where I was the whole overall plan. So, me staying away from okay. situations like that, I like to keep my control over things because just like that, somebody could come in and take everything away from you. Yeah, you're right. I, I know that we hear a lot of stories about artists uh, being frustrated because they do lose a bit of their creative control going from their uh, first projects. To their sophomore album so and, and speaking of first project so we're gonna maybe get into some of your earlier work which was recently re-released uh, no hard feelings give us a brief description of that album like the energy where you were coming from and, and what made you come with that album well at a time like i was saying uh the space wave thing this is three years in from space wave from so three years in I, me being the uh, the engineer, my computer crashed. Once my computer crashed, everybody left me. It's like I was left by it was only me and one of my other artists. 
due to the fact that I had some people in my neighborhood, a guy across the street had a studio, and this is a guy I work with to this day. He doesn't even do music anymore. He's into health and wellness right now. Shout out to We Fly for Lunch. Got his own store. I uh, just have to do that little quick plug in. But uh, yeah, yeah, since the fact that everybody cut let me off and I was going out of limb trying to put everybody on, I even had my own pocket. Now when my, I had one instance where my computer crashed and everybody got up and left. So I was like, okay, I'm going to still grind by myself. But when I get there, it's no hard feelings. And that album, that energy alone gave me the titles to them songs, gave me the energy to create them songs. And that whole album just, it just speaks no hard feelings. I'm <laughs> yeah, basically. yeah. Uh, definitely. And on what platform can we find um, no hard feelings? I know that you mentioned that you have your own website. Do we look for it there? Is it on that PIF? Or where, where would we find well, no I hard feelings? Well, I have it like this. I have the original version that was released in 2015. That's available for free. Download on thatpiff.com. And most of the free mixtapes you can find on thatpiff.com slash ricochet, R-I-C-K-A-S-H-E-A. -E if you want to support me, you can go to ricochet.bandcamp.com where you get the full feature albums and, you know, everything. It's, 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 a, it's a way for you to support my music. And it's a way for... You can pick any amount you want to donate or anything like that. But if you just can't afford an album you want to listen to, it, you can always go to that pit. I don't discriminate from people who got it because my music is for the people. I'm not yeah. out here trying to. I'm not out here trying to sell out an arena yet. But I'm just need to get my my my, my following up. Oh yeah. I need, my, I need my my core my core. That's the word I'm looking for. My core to understand me and my core to feel me. Yeah, I definitely understand that. So we're going to get into a little bit of newer work really quick. So um, the first single, uh, Fuck With Me, I like it. Uh, nice video. Of course, it has a catchy chorus. Uh, what can you explain about this song? Yeah, because that's off the No Hard Feelings. And I was just at that point, I was basically saying I'm still the same person. Because even to this day, people look at me and all the success I make, I make at this time. And it's not. It's not the end of the road, but people look at me and it's like even when I just went home, they expecting the the, the 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 social media version of me to jump out, and it's still the same me. So with fuck with me, all I'm saying is, yeah, I'm projecting myself on a bigger scale because that's what that's what I see in myself. But if you don't like it, either if you like it or don't, just fuck with me. You will fuck with the music. It's not even fuck with me. It's fuck with me. It's one word. Oh, well, <laughs> like, you know, about it, got it. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the second single, which is of course rather dark, um, in the beginning it depicts you getting shot. Um, can you tell us a little bit about "Fuck About Me"? Yeah, now that song is "They Don't Give a Fuck About Me." That was just me venting on that song and letting people, you know, get an instance of how I was feeling. I got the director King Noel. And it was kind of it was kind of hard to do this thing because I have my family watching, I got my people's watching. To actually, sit there and watch me get shot and and laid in the middle of the street. It was kind of hard to watch, but it adds to the sense of you don't give a fuck about nobody in the beginning until something like that happens. So that's why oh, I'm yeah. beginning the video because you only care about somebody when you can't ask them no more. You're right about that. That's why people they always. Uh... Share that sentiment of give me my flowers while I'm still alive instead of seeing yeah. all the RIP and the t shirts while I'm gone. So I definitely right. understand the concept of that one. And once again, that was another dope project. Um, the third single, which from what I see, launched the album to its most successful point, um, with Crabs, another catchy, hypnotic bounce song with a meaning, of course, like all of your songs. What did this song mean to you and your career at this time? Now, with the first two singles, I was kind of coming out. I feel like I was attacking people with the first two singles. with fuck with me and don't give a fuck about me. So, Crabs was a, a very catchy way of putting the idea out there that we all like, it's like crabs in a bucket. You know, people want to see you come, like, people hate to see you coming up, want to pull you down. Yeah, it's like, that's what down. it was about. But I did it in a catchy way that you have no, if you, even if you was one of them people, you still love the song. <laughs> like, I mean, it was just my way of showing that it's not always about it's not always about the what the person is doing in front of you. Because I was I'm basically I'm looking at it like I'm moving up and people pulling me down, not knowing that I'm getting out to pull them out and not you know what I'm saying and not to leave yeah. them. So that's what that's what I'm basically 
doing through all my music and all my all my works. I'm just letting people know that it's not a, a thing just about me. Cause if my if me taking care of myself is my only goal, I'm, I failed as a human because I'm not even worried about nobody else but myself. And shout out to my boy Melo that was in that video. Sporting that Nautica <laughs> jacket and that big 40 of old English. Look like we just pulled him out of time capsule. <laughs> hey, hey, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. So the executive producer of No Hard Feelings also provided the album's only feature, uh, Stone to Death, which already has over 6,000 YouTube views, was a great visual video. How is this different than the other videos? Yeah. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, not to mention that, yeah, uh, Crabs, out of the third, that was the third single, but that was the first single on the album that went over 5,000 views, went over 10,000 views. It's currently at, I believe, 12,000 views just for that one video. So after the following the success of that, the, the the person I'm telling you about that uh, I linked up with from No Budget Entertainment, he's the only feature. He's the only person who had, who believed in me at that point to even do the No Hard Feelings album. So he jumped on the album. You could tell that the, the feedback from Krabs le leaked over into the Stone to Death video because now I got more supporters in the video. I got I got crews of people. We could throw up stacks of money in the video. And it was it was more fun. It was it was more of what I was trying to do in the beginning with bringing everybody together. So I'm glad hmm. I was able to get that joint. And plus, it wasn't just me saying it. I had another person who's probably like seven, eight years older than me, more wisdom than me. It was helping me bring everybody together. And honestly, that was the last song off. That was the last. That wasn't the last single off of No Hard Feelings, but that was my last video shot in Jersey off of that one. Then I moved after that. Okay. Now and actually I'm gonna I'm gonna do a freestyle real quick. So not literally, okay. but how do you think it was taking your music? Now you have a little bit of a buzz, you're in your home area to a completely different area. How how do you think that was like just making a transition from making move music in Jersey? You're from Jersey, you got the support of your people in Jersey to now moving on to a new place and having to create a basically a whole new buzz. So how, how did how did that kind of change things and how were you able to even do it or want to stick with it? Uh well I I looked at it like this because noticing that I don't want to be I don't want to have a, a yes man crew. I'm I'm totally honest and probably the most bluntest person out of my circle. So I don't want a whole bunch of people due, due to the fact that I have success now and all these things are starting to happen. I don't want a whole bunch of yes man people around me. That's going to be in the wrong path. So I'd rather keep it like uh, I came down here. I was trying to show myself that it's not a fluke. It's not just because I have support because I'm from Jersey. I'm getting support from Jersey. I didn't want to do it like that. I wanted to show that my music was great enough to reach a broader audience and you only you only as big you only gonna be as big as you travel. So if I would have oh, yeah. stayed in New Jersey, maybe I only I would have probably been the best New Jersey artist. Now I'm reaching levels of the taking over the whole East Coast right now. Oh yeah. All right, that was just something that I I definitely just wanted to kind of show in there. So um No problem. Of course, after, and this kind of ties into the next question, of course, after the release of Stone to Death 2, like you mentioned, I was when you headed south, just in time because um, that was when, of course, you started to release the South Sound and MJ45 record yeah, yeah, and made yeah. it a two-part movie. I like the song in the video theme for MJ45, but it takes a dark turn as what appeared to be you being abducted and tortured. <laughs> Why so dark of a theme and such a on such a hype song? Well, uh, yeah, that's the thing about it. And the more I got into doing videos, I had to start stepping out the box. Like, for instance, in an MJ45 jersey, I mean, video, sorry about that. I bought that jersey. I recorded that song first, but then that's when they Mission Less just released the the MJ forty five jersey, the the authentic uh, Michael Jordan jersey when he came back for forty five. So I'm like, okay, this is the perfect opportunity to buy it. <laughs> you know, this, I bought it just to wear it in the video. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that was that was my my crook song. It was it's a theme. It has a, a whole Rick Ross type of feel to it. And in the beginning of the video. I was, you know, Jordan came back. That is all about that comeback. 
I was in the video laundering money. It's, it's, it's a metaphor for laundering money. I had the money in the washing machine, laundering money. And the song that comes after that is called Najee Rambas, based off the Martin episode when he became Khalil Sunflower. He basically wanted to change his life. He wanted he wanted something, but he reached out to some, something outside of himself. He needed something else to change him. So the two videos connect because in MJ45, you see the street guy laundering money. And just that simple, at the end of the video, him being who he was, he got ended up getting robbed at the end of the video and ended up it. Why? Because he's he's showing off. When Najee Ramba come in, Najee Ramba was actually where Martin got the idea for uh, Bad Boys 2 to do the Wusa. Wusa. But in, in Martin, it was Najee Ramba. Basically, so you know, relax yourself and humble yourself. So me being adopted in the second video was basically telling myself in the first video, this will happen when you show off. You know, you got people oh, yeah. watching you that's not always your fan. And it is kind of dark. And I do a lot of stuff like that because it's hard to say, it's hard to go cast somebody like, yeah, let me shoot you in the music video. Motherfuckers will look at you like, hell no. But let me tell somebody, shoot me in the music video. The point is still getting across, you know, what I'm trying to pro pro what I'm trying to convey in the music video is going to get across. It's just harder to cast people for certain roles like that. Oh, yeah. But yeah, it was fun. It was fun doing that Najee Rama video, acting like, I mean, I really had to fall back handcuffed in the chair a couple times landed on my on my wrist but i go out i go i go that far to you know to to, to do good work I, I i take the the leap of faith to do good work because it's worth it okay and we definitely appreciate you for that um another video of course is um the video for woke which is rather interesting the theme is understandable and is technically appealing for those who are woke um yeah. so to speak what made you stray away from the dark field songs of no hard feelings to something more melodic, such as Woke? Yeah, uh, Woke was one of the uh, last songs on the, on that album. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to do something different because as I woke up, I'm... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I, I'm I'm really impulsive. Like even this, even like tattoos. I just wake up one day, like you know what? I just want to do something different. With that song, I think it was after the Sandra Bland. Yeah, it was. It was at the right at the Sandra Bland, and uh, I wanted to to speak. I wanted to speak because I felt like I'm 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 basically becoming a part of the problem. If I understand and I'm knowledgeable of what's going on in the world, if I don't use my voice to speak on certain things. I'm only causing the problem. I'm leaving people lost. You know what I'm saying? I'm leaving people lost. So what that idea was, it was just the idea of me waking up every day, doing the same thing every day. But people claim to be woke. But you, if you wake up and do the same thing every day, you're still asleep because you're still in your same cycle. Until you okay. step out of your, uh, your, your comfort zone and do something different, you'll always be asleep. And the video is self-explanatory. Um, I'm in a hotel room, <laughs> like where people yeah. go to sleep at. <laughs> but it was a, we shot that video at, at Myrtle Beach, and that was, that was a good video. I like, I had fun doing that. Okay, and the final video released off of No Hard Feelings is Facebook famous. What was the motivation behind making a song basically targeting those in search of Facebook fame? Because I know we all know somebody. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, it's two different ways because people have this confused the social media how it works. Facebook started off as a way for college students to connect and people to stay connected. It turned into a fucking circus. Now, it's two different levels of Facebook fame. It's those who have something to promote and it's those who's looking for attention because they have nothing to promote. So mm -hmm. in the video, I'm not really technically targeting everybody. I'm just saying for those who go up there where if my name is George Hemingway, but I go up there and I change my Facebook name to G Trap Money all day, you know what I'm saying? That's not <laughs> that's the, you know, that's not what I'm that's not what people really supposed to be representing, but it's for attention. Now if oh, you're yes. going up there and you like, all right, well, I make what I make beaded jewelry, you know what I'm saying? But you you reaching out for that, that's the type of positive uh attention that you want but so it's so much going on like this live thing has gotten so crazy that everybody the fucking cable companies is losing money <laughs> you know what i'm saying yeah. everybody watching live everybody watching somebody in a fucked up house with their bed on the floor talking shit and that's that's entertainment nowadays it's just 
proves how low the attention span has got. Man, it sure has. Man, I'm so glad over the last few months. I'm seeing a lot less people do lives because when it first started to really pop, like, I get all these notifications, this person, that person, like, folks that are just deep in the really? friend. Like, I'm like, I don't even care if they're doing a live, man. Like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so so definitely. So now we head into Rapture 2, statistically the best release from Space Wave Entertainment. I understand you released your first debut in 2012 with the Rapture. Why did you wait so long to release the sequel? Okay, now the Rapture. Now this is how it started. The Rapture actually was belong it belonged to the my, my original record label, which is True Entertainment. When I got released. When I got released, they gave me that music, but that album was already done. That was actually their album. They produced us. Everybody worked on that album. And that album was a masterpiece, but due to the fact that I was running off the label, my video budget got cut. So I just had a banging album with no way to market and promote it. It was a classic album to this day. I will never follow up. Because my albums is usually themed. If I do No Hard Feelings, it's because that's how I feel. But when I wanted to do the Rapture, I wanted to make it... A, I wanted to keep that same energy and I needed key songs because my first Rapture project was more of a street project, not knowing how well my mind worked and how destiny works, that it was giving me up, putting me in situations to write the second Rapture. You listen to this, well, you heard it, but the second Rapture got a whole bunch of different songs up there. No street music is more of the, the theme, the Rapture 2, and the TWO stands for The World Is Over. So when I did the Rapture mm. 2, I, it came it came at the right time when Trump got voted in. <laughs> I dropped it in <laughs> December. <laughs> oh, yeah. So yeah, it came at the right time. The World Is Over. And then I'm actually working on a Rapture 3. And this is, and how these th albums work is because the Raptures, and another thing, the I, I did drop the Rapture around the time my grandmother died. My grandmother was the heart of the family. She's a very religious person. I felt like, you know how they say when the rapture comes, those who got them pure spirits will just go. And mm -hmm. around that time I dropped part one, it's like, that's when I was feeling that. Now it's kind of like in between one and two is like the loss. And we get to that point where the world is over and and Rapture Three is gonna be kind of like post-apocalyptic, <laughs> but that's just okay. that's just we we'll get to that when we get there. <laughs> Definitely. Let me ask you another question. Um, so it does sound like I mean you you've done some things independent. Um, have you ever been like offered what you would think would be a bad deal or been trapped in a bad deal as an artist so far? Like I know, like for myself, I used to um I used to play around with rap when I was much younger. And I actually signed a deal to where everything I were, it was like a deal so I could record in a studio and didn't have to pay, but the studio kept all my work. And like they released mixtapes, I wouldn't get a dime for it, like all kind of stuff. And I was like, dang, like they actually had the rights to my name and just, it was like a big mess. I was only like, I was just turning 18. Have you ever been locked up in like a like what you would say is like a potentially bad deal like that or a raw deal as they say? I would it depends on what you what you what your worth is. If you if you know that you have the talent but you don't have the means, you're gonna have to take a loss here and there, you know, to make it balance out. Like in my situation, I really I really regret, and I'm a, and the people know this who know me personally know I turned down one of the best deals I probably could have had. And that was uh, 2016. I turned down uh, the, the Mountain Dew tour. I turned that down. Mm. I turned that shit down, man. And I, I regret that shit because everybody from, what's his name? XXX Tentation, whatever. Yeah. Red, all of them was on that tour. And that's all, everybody that's popping right now. And I turned it down over, I turned it down over money because I feel like like and this is another thing I'm gonna tell you about Space Wave because I got the LLC, I got artists under me, but when money get involved, people don't want to sign contracts. So I'm telling them this was my offer. My offer was fifteen hundred dollars a show, right? For the first twenty shows on the East Coast, Space Wave do good. We, we do the rest of the tour. That's what that's what they was on right there. My whole thing if if I got one artist, if I'm an artist, I'm getting fifteen hundred dollars a show. I got my own manager and I got my own assistant. 
But I got two other artists with me. They tried to come in and perform with me and write off my whole coattail. But all they had to do was sign their own contract and they would have got their own $1,500. And why do you want to do Why Space Wave members didn't want to do that? And that's where, you know, things got kind of rocky at because I feel like, personally, I didn't need the $1,500. I could have went on tour and promoted. I got my own bread. But I'm saying like, but for opportunity for you to get your own and not, we ain't got three people in one hotel room and he's giving you a piece of paper to sign to say you got your own, you got to work. Work. But. Okay. I regret that. I regret that situation because I would have been right there. <laughs> oh yeah. But things happen for a reason. They do, man, and and we can definitely tell from um, your ambition and just the your drive and the things that you have, the intangibles that you have, that something else is definitely going to come that's even going to be bigger and better than before. So um, definitely shout out to you, man. It may not seem like a, a great move then but like you said sometimes you have to take small losses to really know um what's going on i feel like i've done that myself in in life and i'm pretty sure a lot of people that are gonna view and hear this will understand that hey they've done that too you know sometimes you have to yeah. put yourself in position just to better yourself and sometimes you gotta do it for free but you know sometimes the knowledge that you gain is much more valuable. That's something that I think a lot of people miss. So I'm um, getting back to, um, of course, your albums, your work, and things like this. Um, so the album also features a slew of artists new to Space Wave, Young Nino, Cherry Bomb, Booby Bucks, Gravity, B Wise, and Ray the God. Yeah, Ray the God. Shout out to Ray the God. Shout out to Cherry Bomb. <laughs> Uh, can you give us a little detail about these artists and their position at Space Wave? Okay, yeah. Uh, I got a mixtape series on with Space Wave that's called Yellow Bus Project. With Yellow Bus Project, what we do is we uh it's like a vehicle album, you know, and that's what is that's why it's named Yellow Bus Project, right? Yellow Bus Project, well, we will take independent artists that's probably don't have all the resources, but I offer them resources to you in exchange for a couple of couple features. It's like a bus and a bus stop for children. It's like, no matter how many songs you're on on this album, you might be on the first seat, you might be in the third seat, but when you find your lane, you get off. You know what I'm saying? It was a vehicle to launch every artist oh, yeah. that probably didn't have as much buzz as I had at the time, but it, by putting you on a song with me and we cross market and we bring our network together. Young Nino actually, uh, Young Nino actually, his last, his last, his last works was on the Yellow Book album. Since then, uh, He's not a space wave artist. B Wise, he was just somebody I signed for a couple hooks. The uh, technical space wave artist that you hear on it is Mellow, Cherry Bomb, shout out to Cherry Bomb, and Ray the Child. That's Cherry Bomb. That's yo, that uh, girl, that's my only female rapper. And she and she got it. She sing too. And she family. <laughs> <laughs> shout out to Cherry Bomb. All right, definitely, definitely. Shout out to Cherry Bomb. Um, so just um, wow, and and of course they're all under Space Wave as of right now. So we can definitely check as them of out right now. Deal. As of right now, Cherry Bomb, Ray to God, Mellow Monday, Bass Crow, Black Bag, SK and J Day, Ricochet. That's Space Wave. Okay, I'm missing anybody. Oh yeah, and King Noel, video director. All right, so we're going to definitely get into the next one. Um, the single Real Right is currently at 74,000 views, while the lead single Walk by Faith is at 30,000. The two highest rated and supported videos of Space Wave individually. What can you say were the reasons these two songs were so successful compared to some of your other work? Okay, with the whole Rapture thing, like I just explained, the Rapture 2, I took a whole different approach. My first single, I wanted to be more related to the title and not just a, a sequel to the first one. So with the Rapture 2, I went out my way. I did the, the Walk By Faith song. That was the first single. It's different than any other release I ever did. It's not about shooting shit. It's not about selling. It's not about money. It's not about having sex, having sex or clubbing. It's not about none of that. It's about recognizing your, yourself, your worth, and your walk through this thing called life. Everybody walk is different, but you got to have faith in what you believe in to get through this walk. So with that being said, I did two different scenes. I did the scenes as a present day me and as a past prophet. I'm dressed up like almost like I'm a prophet, like Moses. Got the wig and everything. But that was just letting you know in 
and do and duality wise, the same the same paths they they walked back then. We face these things today, but in different in different situations. But the only way you can get through it if you walk by faith. So with walk by faith, oh, yeah. that that reached up to a lot of people that probably didn't like my gangster music or my club music, but they love what I was speaking about right there. And with real right, real right was a very good visual video. I got some people to come out. They doing willies in the, in the in the video, with motorcycles and all that. But it's not the same thing. It's me speaking from myself about me trying to get real right. It's not about you know hating on nobody else or worried about what the next person got, but trying to do the best that I can do. And that's what I must my definition of being real right. Not being rich like the other person. Not having a bad chick because he got a bad chick, but having a chick that's right for me. That's what real right is about. All right. We definitely respect that and appreciate you for getting us real right. <laughs> All right. So um, definitely uh, maybe one of your most controversial projects to date is Fuck the Game. Where well, the album cover depicts you partially nude with a micro stand being in a metaphor for your midsection. Mm-hmm. Question is, what made you decide to follow up with the success of Rapture 2 with something different. Yo, that was a mistake. I ain't gonna lie. The Rapture 2 was so successful that I got kind of big-headed, you know what I'm saying? I got kind of big-headed because it was the success of the Rapture 2 that made me want to go try something different. And I know how how this marketing thing works. You got to try to... I was First of all, I went to go grab their attention, you know what I'm saying? The name of the album is Fuck the Game because there's a mic stand over where my mama midsection would be. And I'm saying like, fuck music, like fuck the game because we know that the game is, uh, you know, it's different right now. You gotta, uh, you know, you gotta dye your hair different colors and stuff like that. So I was trying to say, I dropped a whole project that didn't have to do none of that. And it was successful to Ratchet too. I dropped a, a project of good music and it's still success. So I dropped the EP to follow up saying, you know, fuck the game. And on that album, I'm playing around with these different new styles of music. This, this, uh, this, this new hip hop, what they, they, I don't know what the fuck they call this, the stick music and all this shit. I'm playing around with them type of flows, but still get my message across, just using the type of methods that they use. And mm. it, it kind of backfired on me because people would start saying all types of stuff on my page, like, oh, oh, you gotta, uh, excuse my, excuse my, uh, my, my derogatory language, but they like, Oh, you a homo because you got your pants. You know what I'm saying? But I'm looking at like you calling me all types of names, but you just clicked on the picture 17 times. Who's mm. a homo? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Like, but you know, not no no offense, but I'm saying like they, it, it got, I got so much negative feedback that nobody really took time to appreciate the album. And that was a that was that's why I messed up at right there with that one. Now, now would you say a that's a, would you say that's a regret of yours? how I went about it. I could have waited. I could have waited a little bit longer, but I, I kind of like followed right back up behind the rapture too. I uh, came too quick. Okay. Definitely understandable. I mean, what it kind of reminds me of is, um, you know, sometimes an artist that's actually all over the news right now, like a Kanye West, sometimes he'll like switch styles and do things a little different and some people really enjoy it and then some people just flat out hate it and they're like hey you know we want the old kanye but honestly like when you look at different artists like everybody evolves eventually like you can't have the same beats over and over again you can't have the same flow you got to experiment like another artist that i really like jay-z um and magna carta he switched up a lot of what he was doing and people were like oh well that album's trash or blah blah blah. what's going on all these uh, it's too uh not poppy but it's too mainstream with the beats and stuff oh we want the reasonable doubt jay the blueprint jay and it's like i think it's always good as an artist when you can sit back and kind of challenge yourself to do different things and figure out something different instead of just going to your old tried and true work, you know, because you knew the Rapture 2 was on point. But I think it's a it's good to see and challenge yourself to do something different because you know, hey, I can go in this lane and do this and dominate. 
But I'm going to show y'all just how diverse I am. So definitely a big ups to you for taking that opportunity to do so. Um, So definitely the first single. uh, Oh, no problem. The first single, Need Some More, which is a great song. And you deliver it as always with your witty punchlines and abstract wordplay. Give the people what this single is about and what it stands for to you. Well, Need Some More. And key word is I spell more as like the Moorish people, M-O-O-R. You know, I like to always drop jewels in there for people that won't think outside the box. Just by putting that word in there made you know, let them know the song has got a deeper meaning to it. But need some more, it's just like, uh, that's just like life anyway. anyway. Like at, in the beginning of the Space Wave, we was okay with doing these little uh, videos with 64-bit cameras and stuff like that. But then as, we, as the demand grow, we need some more. Or just like in life in general, like, if my daughter need uh, sneakers, she gonna need some more. You know what I'm saying? Life is all about growing. Like you cannot stop and be c- c- complacent with anything in life. You gotta want more for yourself. You gotta need more. So the need for more is what should be driving us. And that's what I'm. That's what I'm saying in that song. Like my need for more is making me step out the box and try new things. Things I probably would have never did. Probably the old New Jersey me that used to sit on the block, and, and you know what I'm saying would never be thinking about doing these things. But now to the fact that I know my need and I know I'm not satisfied with, I mean, I wouldn't say satisfied because people in my spot would be like, okay, this is good. But if I got here, how far can I go? You know what I'm saying? I need more. Oh, yeah, definitely. And you know what? As as fans, we need more. Yeah. <laughs> the most <laughs> epic. Oh, well, I'm sorry. The songs that stand out to me are good. I wish the project would have gotten the recognition it deserved. I like the realism of the music, for instance. Ain't shit nigga is not for the club promoter. I'm sorry, it is not for the club promoter, but more for the hip hop listener. While Wedding Cake and Guns and Butter Scream trap music. What direction was the music going in with Fuck the Game? Okay, Fuck the Game, uh, Fuck the game was just like, it was just me, it was my feelings at the time. Like the first intro, uh, the intro for Fuck the Game, I was at work playing with my uh, the piano at my job. And I'm, I'm, I'm good with the piano. And I just started playing out the Mario thing for King Cooper Boy. So I'm like, you know what, I'm about to go home and remake this beat. I went home and made the beat. And that's how the intro to Fuck the Game, which was in the game is. Oh yeah, and I got a video coming soon for that, that too, because I just went out and bought a pair of overalls. And a Mario hat. So I'm about to be Mario. Oh, yeah, I seen that. Yeah, I seen yeah, that. Yeah, that's where I bought it from. But need some more, or uh, like uh, Guns and Butter. Guns and Butter might sound like a, a trap song, but if you really know what Guns and Butter is, Guns and Butter is from Baby Boy, where he's talking about power and money and power. So I'm basically saying I need just as much Guns and Butter that the government got. And the song uh, Wet and Cake, you know what I'm saying? I'm basically walking through my wetting, but it's describing it as a wetting cake, how, how tall I want my money stacked up. And in the song, uh, what's the one you said before you said uh, Guns and Butter? You said... Uh, before Guns and Butter, it, it was Wedding Cake. Um, but before that was Ain't Shit Nigga. Oh yeah, Ain't Shit Nigga. Now, Ain't Shit Nigga is a real deep song because it's nothing... That's just me talking about instances in my life. Shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, ain't, mm-hmm. I sometimes you gotta come to face with you gotta come to terms with these things before you face them. I can't be sitting out here acting like I'm some some somebody better when I know it's things that I did fucked up in my life that I will never be able to get over until I admit them things. So that's just me coming to terms with myself. And the more I listen back to that song, the more I, I felt what I was doing, and I understand that I might not see how I'm looking at you right now. I'm looking at you talking to you, but I will never know what's going on behind your mind. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. We interact with each other thinking we know we controlling so much that we don't even control. We don't have no control over the next person think or do. But we only control our own actions. So I and that's just me showing that I made myself an ain't shit nigga. It's not nobody else. I can't blame nobody else for what I've been through to make my situation and blame them. It's me. I'm the ain't shit nigga. <laughs> mm. Definitely, definitely. Um, so let me see. The most epic project of all is Inkblot, which is also getting an official master release this summer. From the cover art to the song concepts, this album delivers in every way possible. Give the people 
what ink block is. Now, ink block, ink block, the cover is just like an ink block. You know, when you go, the psychologists come together and like, tell me what you see. Ink block breaks down in three ways because I'm, I'm, I don't know, I'll just be breaking down so many ways. Ink block is actually an ink block. What do you see when you see an ink block? People see different things, and that's how people take my music. To, a, to an average listener, some per person might hear this, hear this song and get something out of it that I said, and another person might hear something different. So my music is basically an ink block because you only gonna see, you only gonna get what you see out of it. Second thing, when I made ink block, I was kind of like at a mentally fragile state in my in, in, in my life because. It was a lot of things changing around me and I had so much pressure on me that I wouldn't say I cracked, but I cracked in a good way. I was able to pinpoint these different emotions and capture them in a bubble. So now Ink Block is an album of different emotional states. Every song is a different emotional state. And I captured that one emotion and put it in the song. So if you listen to Ink Block, you can listen to it straight through and it sounds like you're sitting in the chair with a psychologist and you just listen to somebody, you're a psychologist listening to somebody tell you their story. Ink Block is mostly about me and my mind, things I went through like Late Night Cruise. There's a video out for that. And not only that, yeah, I got a lot of videos off of Ink Block. Late Night Cruise is a song about me kidnapping somebody. Laying over with you is a story. <laughs> but Different is a song about me <clears throat> realizing that Growing up, I was trying to be what my environment wanted me to be. Different was me letting me realizing that you can be different. You could be an anime, you know, you could be an anime watching kind of type of guy and still be from the middle of the block and be the middle of the hood. You can be who you, you can be different because being different is what makes us who we are. And yeah, in that video it kind of got dark, but the Ink Block album is mind states, different, different ideas of mind states. So and they all come from me. And that's why I love that album. That album is definitely a piece of me. And that's and I, I and I do see that of course you got eleven videos coming from this album. Yeah. Um, some of them being, of course, uh, Black Magic, One, I Just Be, of course, the song you just mentioned, Late Night Cruise, um, IDGF, or I don't give a fuck. Yeah. Um, what made you promote this so hard? I promoted this album because I felt like during the process of making this album, I used to sit in a studio because the studio was always in my apartment, in my house or whatever I was living. I always make sure I have enough space to build my studio up in my house. I feel like this album was taking like the the worst the worst things out of me that and making art out of it. Like situations like for instance, uh, what song? Now I see. Now I see where I want to be. That song was just me explaining that I came from the hood, I came from the struggle, and I came up and I seen something else. Now that I'm back in the middle, I know what I want. I know that I want to go back to where I came from, but I know I want to do something better for people around me so they can see this stuff and they can enjoy these things. That album, I promoted that album so hard because it, I wanted the world to actually get a piece of what I was thinking and my mind state, because you have a better understanding Listen to this album. You have a better understanding than me listening to this album. Okay. Definitely. And definitely got to be able to promote all your best work. So yeah. another dark theme with you. It appears in the different video from Overdose on Pills. In the So Good video, you're attacked by a female demon. And in the Late Night Cruise video, you kidnap and murder a guy. I asked, what makes you decide to go so extreme in certain cases for your music visuals? Well, my music videos, I like to always add the element of surprise. So with the, uh, well, with the, uh, the different video, like I said, because now we live in a world where they think if, if you being different or you being creative, they want to, uh, you know, give you ADHD medicine. Because you got a thought, <laughs> you know, you're being creative, you're thinking outside the box, you're not being a machine. So in that video, me Odin was basically saying that I'm different. They want to keep giving me pills because I'm different. You know what I'm saying? To the mm -hmm. point where we killing ourselves. So that's why, you know, it was, it was a scene of me OD in the beginning of that video. As far as with late night cruise video, it's a story, and that's all I'm gonna say. Yeah, you gotta watch that because you it, it, you'll be hooked. I don't wanna get it, I don't wanna get it ended in the way, but 
And with the So Good video, it's it starts off as a regular, you know, chick type of song, but it's always saying, even though I'm saying that the, the chick shit's so good, whatever, at the end of the video, what you think is good ain't always good for you. She ends up turning, she's she's attractive, she's sexy, but then she ends up fucking eating my neck off. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> what, what, don't don't be fooled because everything that look good ain't good for you. Oh, yeah. Everything that glitter ain't gold, for sure. Exactly. All right, now your final release from Space Wave, Space Wave as an artist is the DD OBS album, oh, yeah. which is branched off of your real name. The Before, yeah. when we get into the album, I see these memes floating around saying that Rick Ricochet is actually appearing as a group on the D Dobbs album. Can you explain this? It's like a whole. <laughs> yeah, I know. You know what I'm right. thinking? Like when, when you think of a group, I'm thinking that Hey Ya video. Um, by Outkast with Andre 3000, he was like multiple people in the band. But yeah, ex explain to that. Explain to us. Um, how are you going to be featured as multiple people in your own album? Okay, now Ricochet, the name Ricochet, the word the word Ricochet is just you know something that bounces off of one thing. It's all over the place. All right, so I'm entitled. I'm using that right now because I'm actually as a more. Oh yeah, and, and yeah. We gonna talk off the camera about that quadruple life because it's almost sick. But anyway, I'm gonna start to go to my real name, which is my real name is Dirk Dobson, but I go by the Monica D Dobbs because that's what I use on Facebook. So uh, uh with this album, Ricochet is the, the over the past twelve years of my career, I've been going by the name Ricochet. Prior to leaving my family company, I had a couple of different names, which when I was trying to really fill myself out, I went by Too Tragic. I went by Trigger. I went by Magic. I went by a different couple, a couple different names, and these different names got different. I, I rapped a different type of way. So with the D Dobbs album, Ricochet is appearing as a group with all these people, all these different personalities, I should say. And it's basically for the core fans who've been following me, who know about these. These person that I said, I'm sounding like a skit up here, like like, <laughs> like that split, like that split movie. <laughs> but yeah, it's basically like I'm I'm coming on this album, giving different personas of my career, different flows and different way, ways I rap. Like Trigger is more of a DMX type of rapper, you know what I'm saying? Where mm. in the sense of when I do D Dobbs, D Dobbs is me. Derek, the real person, the per you know what I'm saying? That's when I speak about my life in situations like that. While Too Tragic is the charismatic bouncy flow, the actual ricochet flow where I bounce from wordplay, bouncing all over the place. It's just giving me an opportunity to play with this and play with these different levels. And album cover art is a black sheep. The reason I did that because due to the fact that uh, I got so much ideas and I, 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 got, I got so much going on that I'm out the norm that people categorize me as a weirdo and shit like that because I'm different because I ain't trying to be out here selling about drugs and shit like that. So it was like, you know what I'm saying? So people can oh, oh, you ain't got no bandana on and you ain't, you know what I'm saying? So, but nah, this is D Dobbs. This is me. All these different personalities, all these different, all these different type of flows is me. And I'm, that's what I'm giving you. I'm giving you, that's why it's called D Dobbs, my real name. Okay, that definitely makes sense. Um, I definitely know, you know, when you're an entertainer and in entertainment, like myself, I have a few different monikers and they mean different things. Um, like I said, when I used to rap back in the day, you know, I had one name and then I took another name and then like with each name, I'd kind of just switch my style up a little bit. Yeah, exactly. So I definitely kind of, and even like with what I do now with podcasting, writing, and the different other things that I do, like I have different monikers for that because it, it's like it's a different person. It's the same person, but it's a different <laughs> side of me that yeah, comes back. So, yeah, I could definitely understand that. So, um, um, deaf here and okay. So the D Dobbs album is ninety percent curse free, except the intro. What made you want to record something without curse words? Because uh, now I got a lot of people that's not in my age demographic that likes my music, but they always tell me the same thing. 
Boy, you curse too much. You curse too much. I be wanting to let somebody hear it, but you curse too much. I be wanting to promote your music, but you curse too much. So maybe it's not that I got bad music. Maybe it's just that I curse too much. Another mm -hmm. challenge was me seeing if I could actually pull it off and still make a good song, making sure that I wasn't lacking in vocabulary. Like one of the people I look up vocabulary wise is T.I. because he started off as a trapper. Now this motherfucker sound like Encyclopedia Brown. Like, yeah. <laughs> for real. But you know what I'm saying? It's all about growth. And I want people, to, I want to show people that I can do it. And if I can make an album without no curses and it still sounds good, that's just adding another uh, another check to my list of things I can do. Now, Keep one thing I always do. Cap. Yeah, exactly. And then I'm, I, I, I like the fact that I'm a sponge, that if I don't know nothing, I won't get mad about it or try to knock somebody's pegs off, but I'll sit there and learn. Half of the stuff I I did I learned just sitting by watching it and just picking up and practicing. You know, they say in the Bible, whatever you believe. I just I don't you don't you don't gotta be religious to think that, but you can leave you can leave with one skill and come back with three if you use your mind. You know what I'm saying? Like you could go come back with another skill. You ain't gotta just be stuck in one box. You're right about that. You don't never let them box you in for sure. Exactly. So actually, I'm pretty excited about hearing an album like that. And I, de I definitely understand where you're coming from with the, depending on the people in your demographic, you may have people that are older than you, you may have people that are younger than you, younger cousins, younger siblings, your child. So it definitely is a good skill to have to be able to make good records that don't have curse words in it because to me that makes it seamless to put them on the radio like instead of having a song where you're like yeah mother blupper or whatever you know like that doesn't even make sense <laughs> you know what i'm saying but um i definitely understand that i know um when i was with the committee podcast like that was something that i told myself branching out from them i wanted to do different podcasts and one of them i wanted it to be one where it's a limited amount of curse words the reason being is because I felt like if you're just cursing up a storm, saying nigga a bunch and stuff like that, I may have older family members and I'm not able to really play that in front of them or, you know what I'm saying? So sure. I'm limiting myself to my audience because of the language. So I was like, okay, well, one of the ideas I had is to do do a podcast and not have so much bad language in it. So I definitely understand where you're coming from with that. Um, so of course we are going to begin to wrap things up a bit. So of course, if you're interested in hearing more from Ricochet and that's uh, Rick R I C K space A period space Shay S H E A and Space Wave Entertainment, you can check out the videos at youtube.com uh backslash space wave one that's all one word and download the rick a shay albums at ricochet.bandcamp.com free mixtapes at thatpiff.com dot ricochet so i'm definitely glad to have you on today glad to be able to do an interview um with you hopefully we get this out here as soon as possible yes, and sir. um can't wait to hear your next uh your work Pretty yeah, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna wrap though. We're gonna wrap. I appreciate you having me up here, Trey. Kill it All right. Shout out to you, man. Oh yeah, thank you very much, man. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm love Killer Trey. I don't have a podcast name for y'all yet, but soon <laughs> enough. Um, anyway, shout out to everybody that's always tuning in, and always down. Um, this is Love Killer Trey for the day, and I'm out. All right. <laughs>